Good morning! So for today's lesson, we're going to talk about how to keep your kitchen clean and safe. So are we satisfied with the sanitizing and disinfecting our kitchen premises? Wala na bang naiiwang microorganism? So sabi dyan, although they are not visible threats, the many microorganisms waiting in your kitchen can infect your cooking and eating. And of course, consequently have a negative effect on your health. So, food poisoning and diarrhea are just some conditions which might be caused by preferring food in a dirty, germ-infested kitchen. So, of course, in order to prevent this, you need to make sure that your kitchen is kept clean and safe from bacteria and, of course, other germs. So, here are ways to ensure the cleanliness of your kitchen and keep bacteria at bay. First, remove unnecessary clutter from surfaces. So, discard appliances and gadgets that you don't use anymore or as unused appliances would only tend gather dust. So, be sure that any appliances which are still maintained and are used are stored in a safe place that is out of reach of children. So, tanggalin yung mga hindi naman ginagamit na appliances or kung may ginagamit mga equipment or tools. So, from time to time, ibabalik natin siya sa ating uh, cabinet. So, para maiwasan po ang pagkakaroon ng contamination at pagkapit ng mga microorganism or germs. Next, Keep your refrigerator clean and tidy. Why? Of course, before you do your weekly shopping, remove old and rotten food and clean shelves and racks. So look at the expiration dates and be sure to label any containers on homemade food or leftovers. So don't make a habit of keeping food for too long in the fridge. So rotten food will breed bacteria and may even contaminate fresh food that is kept in the same area. So, di ba commonly, we store the vegetable and fruits in our compartment or in our fridge, in our refrigerator. So, kapag may nakita tayong nabubulok na, tatanggalin na kaagad natin because it may contaminate the fresh food. So, maaaring mahawahan pa niya yung ating mga kabibili lang na mga prutas at gulay, or kung ano man yung ini-store natin sa loob ng ref. So, number three, use a rubbish bin with a lid to keep odors out that attracts flies and, of course, other insects. So, empty it as soon as possible it smells, even if it is not yet full. So, you should ideally do this every day. Of course, di ba, commonly, we throw our garbages um, every day. So, kailangan lagi nagtatapo ng basura. So, of course, to avoid uh, the attraction of flies and other insects. That may cause or that may bring uh, microorganisms or bacteria or germs. So, another, number four, wash and disinfect your rubbish bin once a week. Uh, this will ensure that any germs which might have remained even after you empty, empty out of the rubbish will die and cannot multiply. Also, this will remove any foul smell which might be emanating from the trash bin. So, why not daily? You can do this daily. After, after throwing your garbage, you can disinfect and wash your rubbish bin daily. So, para mas malinis at mas maiwasan natin ang pagkakaroon ng germs and bacteria. Then next, number five, use a separate chopping boards for different kinds of food. Of course, this is a must. So, keep separate chopping boards for your meat and your vegetables to reduce the spread of bacteria. So, clean the meat chopping board extra carefully then, especially after cutting chicken, as raw food has a higher tendency of containing bacteria. So, kailangan may iba't ibang 
there is a color coding class. So, may iba't ibang kulay ng shopping boards para sa iba't ibang ori ng pagkain. Number six. Number six. Change the dishcloth you wipe surfaces with every day. So, use a different cloth for surfaces than for dishes. So, wash the cloth with hot water and as appropriate bleach. So, use separate towels for hands and dishes and change both of those regularly too. So, wag gagamitin yung pangpunas ng kamay sa pangpunas ng plato or the other way around. So, mas mataas class yung tendency na magkaroon ng contamination at magkaroon ng microorganisms and bacteria sa ating mga surfaces kapag gano'n ang ating ginawa. Okay. Next. Use a paper towel for any mess that is particularly likely to cause contamination, contamination such as raw meat or eggs and anything that has fallen on the food. So, it is better to use cleaning material that you can easily throw out after and prevent from contaminating other food. So, instead of using towels or sponges, which you would still be likely to use again afterwards, so why not use paper towel? So, kung wala naman talaga tayong paper towel, we have dishcloth, but after wiping or using that in, uh, use surfaces, kailangan natin siyang labahan ka agad. Okay, next. Keep kitchen floors free from the breast, debris and grease by sweeping and washing regularly. So, if something has spilled, of course, make sure to mop it right away instead of letting the mess stay there. So, aside from making sure that germs that use the spillage as a breeding ground, immediate mopping would also prevent unwanted accidents such as sleeping, sleeping from occurring. So, di ba kung gano'n naman yung ginagawa natin? Kapag may nahulog sa, uh, kapag may natapon sa sahig, kailangan imap agad, punasan agad to avoid uh, accident and to avoid, of course, contamination as well. Kapag, uh, another is, para may wasan din yung pagbibreed ng different bacteria doon sa uh, sa sahig na nagkaroon ng spill. Next, number 9. Don't leave dirty crockery and pans to fester where they can attract harmful bacteria. That is a big no. So, wash dishes with hot water and soap as soon as you're done using them. So, huwag na natin i-stack pa kung kailan pa natin Kung kailan lang gagamitin ay tsaka hugasan So, that is a big no. So, after using it, we need to wash them with hot water and soap. Okay, number 10, wash surfaces that get touched. So, periodically wipe doorknobs, the handles, the buttons and controls, and light switches in and around your kitchen with cleaning agents. So, even if they seem clean to the naked eye, they may already be harboring bacteria. So, nakakadiri, no? So, kailangan, kailangan, lagi natin ding ilinisin yung mga surfaces na lagi nating hinahawakan. Then, lastly, wash your hands before handling food. So, and again, if you sneeze or cough, blow your nose, go to the bathroom or touch high use surfaces you need to wash our hands frequently okay so those are those are the 11 tips on how to keep our kitchen clean now let's talk about the safety measures so, the following are safety measures that you should do when you First, ensure adequate ventilation. Since we're dealing with chemicals, with disinfectants, it is a must that our area is well ventilated or may hangin na nagsicirculate dun sa area na yon to avoid suffocation. Next, have knowledge of basic first aid. So, itinuro ko na sa inyo kanina 
what are we going to do kung sakaling mangyayari yung uh, mga ganong incident. Then, wear cotton, cleaning, uh, cotton clothing to cover your limbs and other parts of your body that might be exposed to the cleaning agent. So, bakit kaya cotton yun? So, para mas madaling mahugasan at para hindi masyadong kumapit yung ating uh, cleaning agent. Next, wear suitable footwear. It should be close in and have steel toe. So, of course, ang kailangan talaga ay lagi rin naman tayo may suot na chanelas kapag tayo nasa loob ng bahay or nasa kitchen. And most especially if we are using chemicals in sanitizing and disinfecting our kitchen tools, equipments, and premises. The next, wear industrial strength Thick plastic or rubber rubber gloves. So, kailangan meron tayong rubber gloves na ginagamit if you are using chemical or heat in sanitizing. Then, wear protective eye and face wear. So, of course, para maiwasan din natin ang accident, kailangan ready tayo. So, we should, we should wear our Okay, now, how are we going to store our chemicals? So, now let's talk about the storage and security of chemicals. So, the following are recommended for the storage and security of chemicals and cleaning agents. First, keep them in a separate area, away from food and other products. So, Usually naman kasi, di ba, meron tayong isang area sa bahay natin where we stored our cleaning agents, yung mga panglinis natin sa bahay. Usually, uh, magkalayo talaga siya sa pagkain or any other products. Then, keep on lower shelves to prevent accidents and to keep chemicals from falling into food products. So, nasa, pain, uh, nasa babang bahagi siya commonly ng ating mga shelves. Then, another one is store in a cool, well-lit, and well-ventilated room. So, hindi dapat siya nakatago sa isang closed room at baka magkaroon ng explosion. So, do not store near heat. So, okay, another, do not keep punctured aerosol cans. So, wag nang magta uh, wag na tayo mag store ng punctured aerosol cans cause it might uh, it might cause explosion. Then, store chemicals with lids tightly on. Dapat naka-seal ng mabuti. Then, make sure chemicals and other cleaning agents are clearly labeled specifying their content and use. So, kapag nangyari yung panahon na natanggal na yung cover niya or your label niya, so, ang gagawin natin ay lalagyan ulit natin siya ng label kung ano ba yung content and kung saan siya ginagamit. So, para maiwasan din yung pagkakamali natin and to avoid accident. Next, ensure that the use by date or manufacture date is clearly readable. So, para alam natin kung hanggang kailan ba natin pwedeng gamitin yung isang chemicals or sanitizing. Next is a storage container should be free of corrosion and moisture. So, always remember, dapat hindi basa at hindi at wala dapat corrosion yung ating containers when storing our chemicals. So, of course, to avoid the chemical reaction. Next, the storage area should be kept secure and locked when not in use. Then, always store chemicals in designated containers. And last, do not mix chemicals. Especially kapag hindi natin alam kung ano yung compositions niya at kung para saan siya ginagamit. So, do not mix chemicals. Okay, how many more can you think of? May naiisip pa ba kayong safety procedures on how to keep our chemicals? So, kung paano natin siya i-store? 
Is there any anything that you want to share? Or do you have any questions? So if none, okay, that would be all. You may now proceed to our next activity. Good luck and God bless.